of the Canon Yarns podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, crochet, spinning, fibre based fortnightly podcast but because of the current climate we might well go to weekly podcasts just to keep myself sane more than anything else. So yes, we follow the for usual format of um, finished objects, works in progress, um, some acquisitions or some discoveries, stash discoveries, and then we go into just some general chatter about what I've been up to um, and what I plan to do over the next few days. So let's begin. I am gonna give my nose an itch after that fiber at the beginning. Um, yes, if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you are well and uh, I appreciate you giving me some of your time today. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I hope you've had a good week. Um, the weeks are pretty crazy at the moment with the, uh, the coronavirus in full swing around the globe. So even though we think we might have uh, our week panned out, things change very quickly as I will discuss later on. But for the meantime, I hope you've got a little bit of a, an in brackets moment. You're able to sit for half an hour or so with me um, and you've got yourself a little drink and your knitting bag, your project bag, you're on your spinning wheel, whatever. Even if you're cooking a little bit of dinner and you've got me on in the background, that's fine by me. If I can keep you company for a little while, that is all that matters. And um, yes, I certainly appreciate you guys keeping me company in this crazy, crazy world. So anyway, onwards with the vlog, podcast, video podcast, whatever they get called these days, you know the thing. Finished objects. Yes, yes, yes. I have finished my Trek sweater by Tin Can Knits and I could not be happier. There was a few adaptations I made along the way. I wasn't entirely sure whether it would work out, but I am really, really pleased. I'm going to attempt to stand up a little bit and show you because I've cropped it from um, the length that it it is in the pattern. So if I just slowly stand up, excuse I, uh, you can see that it is a little bit cropped here. Uh, this is my waist there and it's just below the waist. And this bit here, it's not toothpaste, I promise. You know, like sometimes you get a little bit of a fleck in the yarn. Ah, oh, it would be right in the middle. I'm gonna have to colour it in with a pen or something. So yeah, it looks like I've been um, a little bit lax whilst cleaning my teeth. I haven't, I promise. I've had cleaned my teeth, but I didn't drop any toothpaste on my jumper. So what did I do? It's done, uh, I did it in John Arban Knit by Numbers, which is a DK weight. As you can see in previous episodes, I've been banging on about it for ages. Um, it's really soft, it's really cozy. It is a super wash to some extent. It still recommends hand wash, of course, but it is a super wash. Um, so what did I do differently? Well, I was going to do the large extra large size because I wanted it to be baggy. And in the Tin Can Knits book, the um, Strange Brew book, a lot of them are quite fitted. But I wanted it to be quite baggy and quite boxy, so um, I excluded the waist shaping. And I think the pattern says to go down for um, oh, 15, 16 centimetres, I believe. But I only went down to 10 and a half. Um, and that has worked out really, really well. I say went down, it's a bottom up. So uh, I made sure the body was about 10 and a half um, inches before I started on the yoke um, and joining everything together. The sleeves, when I did the large, extra large sleeves, um, they were just really baggy. They're, they're baggy anyway, but the cuff wasn't even uh, close fitting at all. So I went down a size in the cuff um, circumference and cast on for the smaller size of the sleeve and then just increased a couple of extra times to hit the correct stitch count at the top to be able to carry on with the large extra large um, stitch count that was needed up here when you join the sleeves to the body. And that worked out really well. Um, the sleeves are a little bit longer than I would normally do, but actually I quite like the fact that they're coming over my cuffs. I tend to roll my sleeves up a lot. Um, so if they're here, that's I've, I've realized that that sort of really gets on my nerves. So I prefer them to be either a little bit longer and I live in a very cold house 
and uh, spend a lot of my time in very cold rehearsal rooms so coming over the the wrist is no bad thing um, so either a little bit longer or three quarter length I think is probably the perfect length for me so that's a slight adaptation I I made with the sleeve size but I did continue the sleeve to the measurements as laid out in the pattern um, it's on a four millimeter needle UK size four millimeter so it knits up really quickly and I hardly used any of the the five colors for the yoke I think the most I used was about 30 grams I'll put it all in my Ravelry notes if you're interested at all because um, Myself and my friend Carol, we split 100 gram skeins of the colour, uh, so we had 50 grams each and we weren't entirely sure that we would have enough, but easily enough, easily enough. I think on some of the, a couple of the colours, which are only dashes of colour, um, I think I only used about 13, 14 grams, so it's great. I could probably get away with um, using those colours for another yoke, maybe a slightly smaller yoke if I got some of the of the main colour again. So yeah, it's gone, it's gone really well, as in I, I haven't used up very much at all. Excuse the confusion. This, uh, this whole uh, isolation thing has kind of messed with my mind slightly. Trying to keep focus is really, really tricky, but we'll come to more of that later on. So yes, Trek sweater, tin can knits. I absolutely love it. And if only I could go outside, I would wear it with pride but you know when we get there when we get through this then I will be parading this up and down the streets whether you like it or not so that's me with my sweater it's lovely and cozy um, and it was a, a relatively quick knit I think it took me about a month and um, as you guys that have been here for a while know I work away from home in the week so if I haven't packed it in my project bag it doesn't really get much air time so uh, yeah this last few days has been great to kind of finish that off and get it blocked. Um, blocking wise, it was the perfect size, unblocked. So I didn't really want to soak it completely and wor I worried that it might stretch a little bit because it's super wash wool, I was concerned it would stretch. So I laid it out and just spray blocked it. So by that I put a tiny bit of um, the wool wash uh, stuff in a, uh, a sprayer, a plant sprayer, and just really, really sprayed both sizes and pressed down gently to make sure all the, the moisture went through the whole of the jumper all the way down to the, um, the floats at the back and then flipped it over and did the same on the other side and just arranged it gently. I didn't block it with any wires or with any pins or anything like that. I just gently put it into the shape I wanted because I didn't want anything to stretch any bigger um, and that worked really well I, I left it for about 12 hours and then flipped it over so the other side would have some air and the the floats and the color work have just settled really nicely so um, yeah I was pleased with that I generally do a full-on wet block but because of the shape as I say I just had a spray block and it's worked out okay so hurrah hurrah that is one finished object um when will the next finished object be i'm not entirely sure excuse me as i take a slurp because the next sweater i'm working on as you know if you are a regular viewer is the chauncey sweater by isabel kramer chauncey isabel kramer absolute angel um and that is on a 3.25. Had a little bit of a drama with the gauge, which you can find out in the previous episode. I think that's been sorted now. But this is going to take a very long time. I think I've realized that now. Um, when did I last uh, post? About a week ago. Yes, it was a week ago, last Saturday, because it's Saturday today. What's the date today? Oh, are you like this as well? No clue. Um, 28th? Something like that, maybe? Around that, 28th of March, I think. Um, so yes, this is the Chaunty sweater, and I finished all the colour work last Saturday, and I think I've done the increases now, ready for um, going over the shoulders. But man alive, it has taken a long time. 3.25 after this, 
3.25 is quite a commitment, let's just say. So I wonder whether I'm going to use this as a bit of a challenge. Uh, I'm um, a thrower knitter. What's that? English style? Welsh style, you know, UK style. Um, so I might try and see if I can master uh, continental knitting. You know, the one where you pick for the rest of it. I know it's going to take me a little bit longer to begin with, but I think that it will help with my gauge because that always makes me knit a little bit looser anyway. Um, so that might help, give me a little bit more room. So we'll see. I know it's not something you need to, you should kind of go back and forth over because obviously you don't want to change the tension back and forth, back and forth. Maybe I'll do just a couple of rounds, just see if I can bear it and then see what happens. Although I'm not going to be able to watch the telly then. And then this is, this is, this is how my head works. We'll see. I'll come back to you on that one. But yeah, this is going to be quite a commitment, I think, time-wise. But that's okay. Something that you can... Um, just tick away on whilst you're watching the TV is great. Uh, that is being knitted out of Isagar, uh, Tavini Tweed and Rauma Fenelgarn. Oh, no, not Fenelgarn, Lamulgarn. This one. Uh, and this one, as I've mentioned before, those are the two. This is a Danish. Uh, Danish, yeah, Danish company, and this is a Norwegian company. Um, yeah, that's that's really nice. I'm enjoying that one. What else? What else? So last week I told you I was doing my mystery cow uh, that is um, being hosted by Anne Kingstone and Sarah Alderson, Alderton, Alderson, I think. Um, so we're now on week three. Week three was delayed slightly because of um, issues around corona and commitments, etc, etc. Uh, so, and I'm only on week one. I didn't show you what I'd been doing last week because I thought I might give stuff away. But now we're on week three, beyond week three, in fact. And I'm only on week one. I knew I was always going to be behind, so it was fine. But these are the two colours that I'm looking at. Um, you can find details of those in my Ravelry notes or in the previous episode. Um, and this is the start of it. It's a, a little lace border. There were two options and there are two options every week. You can um, yeah, choose between two options. And the options in, first, in the first week were cast on 403 stitches or cast on 12. Yeah, 12. I went for 12. So this is the little border let me see if i can open this out a little bit i haven't done lace for ages and it has been really really lovely to get back into is that going to focus at all because it's so delicate um no yes a little bit maybe it's a little leaf pattern it is um and that's really lovely i think it's like a 19 19 row repeat um, but those 19 rows, because you're obviously only working on a 12 stitch count, happens really quickly. So I think you've got to repeat that uh, stitch count 30 times, 30 repeats, something like that. So again, a nice one that is slightly concentrating, but not entirely concentrating. So you get to um, have your, your mind, you're allow, allowing your mind to wander a little bit and do the things it needs to do, uh, as well as keep you on track with a bit of... Uh, lace meditation let's call it so that's a nice one to keep ticking over um what else uh that's on a 2.75 as well so another quite a small project and then the only other thing oh no two more things i have on the needles um where's the other one? Oh, there it is is my brioche this is a new skill for me for this year and I'm starting to make some good progress there. So this is the Sea Lig Shawl uh, in Pom Pom Magazine Autumn last year, Catherine Schubert. And I've only got the, uh, the black and white picture here, but you kind of get the gist of where we're heading with that. Love 
lovely lovely i've also realized that i say lovely a lot you probably do lovely and glorious i think are the two words that i use most um you know if you kind of do those word map things on facebook or whatever yeah those are definitely the words that would come up for me um but i'm starting to get to grips with this now uh, it was only going to be a sunday thing because sunday was the only day i had a bit of brain space but I can kind of um, pick it up and put it down a little bit quicker these days. I'm starting to get into the, the gist. I'm starting to be able to read the work a little bit clearer, making sure that, you know, the um, the barks and the burps, I've kind of got those uh, down pat now. I can read them in the work rather than waiting to see the camera doing its thing, turning off. Let's not worry. Yes, so I'm not worried about having a so much time to be able to dedicate to that one because I can pick it up and put it down a little bit better than I have done previously. So starting to get to grips with that one. Um, what else, what else? Yeah, so all my projects are quite long-term commitments, I felt. And you know the satisfaction you get from finishing an object? Here is a case in, in point. Um, I was craving that a little bit. So I picked up my book of um, Maya Carlson's mittens, Swedish mittens, and had a little flick through here and tried to match up with my stash. Have you been doing that a little bit more lately? Trying to um, obviously work from stash, being at home, uh, as most of you probably are, um, most of the world is still is is on lockdown to a certain extent spending more and more time at home working from home things like that so it's quite nice to rediscover bits and bobs of your stash that uh previously you might go oh well i'll just i'll just get the yarn in for that but now looking at your stash and kind of going right what can i make and this is one of those cases in point not overly successful but you'll see what i mean in a minute so this is the pattern i'm doing it's the spruce sprig this one, oh my lovely little mittens. And they are an Aran weight, um, and it's done in the Letlopi, you know, the Istex Letlopi, uh, the Icelandic brand. Uh, and I had two balls of that anyway. But as you can see, it also calls for three balls, but um, I'm hoping that if I do a cuff in one color, uh, in the same colour as the colour work. I should be able to even out what I need. I'm not sure, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, so this is the Letlopi. So these are the only two colours that I had. So Istex Letlopi, uh, 50 grams, 100 metres, 100% wool. Um, and yeah, it's an Icelandic brand. Yes, Icelandic wool. Um, I did a sweater out of Alfossa Loppy oh, a couple of years ago, and it is super, super warm. It's fantastic. You know those really crisp, either spring or autumn days. Um, I don't like to wear a coat that often. I, yeah, I've said this before, I'm like a teenage boy in that sense. If I can get out of the house without a coat, I'm happy. Um, so yeah, those sorts of sweaters are perfect for that kind of weather. And this, it is itchy, but if you wear something under it, um, and the sweater that I've made, it has a, a double folded sweater so that on the inside you can put softer stuff uh, around your neck and around your cuffs. It's in my Ravelry notes if you're desperate to find out. It's um, a Paper Tigers, Paper Tigers? Yeah, pattern. Anyway, we're not talking about that one, we're talking about this one. Um, so these are the colours. So you can see, you can see, those of you that are experienced colour work knitters are going to say, well, that's never going to work. And you're quite right. There's not enough contrast in these two colours to be able to pick out the design. In the picture, a lovely white or cream and a bold colour. These are too similar, tonal-wise. Obviously, they're different colours. Um, so you can see that you cannot really pick out the spruce sprigs you can a little bit and I think once I block it they'll probably be a little bit better but you can't really pick them out it's a, a little after well not an afterthought a forethought thumb gap there um so yeah not ideal but 
it's using up stuff that's in my stash. They will still be warm and toasty, whatever whatever they look like um, visually. So I'm gonna carry on with those and have a little bit of finished object joy. Uh, they are done on a four millimeter, and as you can see, because I'm trying to um, get two mittens out of two balls instead of three balls, I've done the cuff here in the green of the spruce rather than the red as the, as would be recommended in the pattern. Um, I'm just about to start decreasing for the top of the mitten and then I'll probably come back to the thumb. I'll probably do the other mitten first uh, and see if I can see what I've got left because I might have to do green thumbs rather than a pattern thumb as is on the pattern. So that will hopefully give me a little bit of um, finished object joy other than the, the long, long hauls that are the other two, which are, are the other three, which are great projects to do, but obviously take a little bit more commitment. Um, and you can kind of feel like you're going, working uphill for a while, can't you? Uh, excuse me, I'm really dry today. So those are all the things I've got on the needles, really, other than the socks and the languishing hibernation blankets which will come out soon I have no doubt depending on how long we are uh, in the state we are with the the virus and the lockdown etc etc um so the only other thing I've got to chat about really is um I bought a spinning wheel last year and I've been doing some bits and bobs but don't really have the time to focus on it generally now I do have a little bit more time even though I'm working from home um, we are heading towards our Easter break for the students so um, the student contact time is diminished anyway uh, and it's just paperwork and marking so I can get a little bit more of that done and because I'm home and I'm not usually at home I can get my spinning wheel out and maybe leave it out a little bit uh, a little bit more often so I can jump on and jump off when I have a bit of time so this is some of the uh, fibre that I bought last year. I learned to spin at the Fibre Hut in Evesham. Uh, there's a vlog of that a little bit further back in my channel. If you are anywhere near that place, it is, uh, it's glorious. Once this all lifts, I would recommend popping along there. And small businesses will need our help 100% once all this is over. But this is, this is their logo, the Fibre Hut. Um, and this is some just a merino, merino humbug, so it's got a couple of shades running through it. So that is the stuff that I am practicing on because my hope is that this merino alpaca silk, look at that, what glorious, glorious shades, really bluey whites. Um, I'm hoping to be able to spin that up with a little bit more expertise uh, so that I can get, I'm still very slubby in my spinning and now I've got, I shouldn't have worn black leggings, should I? I've got fibre all over me. Um, just to try and to, to create something that's a bit consistent or continuous would be a good, a good thing for me to get out of this time here at home. So um, over this weekend, I might try and set that up so I can have a bit of a practice and then next week um, when I get to those half hour, hour breaks from work, I can just hop on and the meditation of the wheel, the meditation of the needles is really important at this time. For me anyway, I find that really, really helps with the craziness of uh, being anxious and worried and scared, etc, etc. Um, so yes, being able to have a look at that. Uh, what else? What else? I was given uh, a couple of books by a friend that he came across in his um, library or boxes of stuff that they have at home and look at these. So these are some traditional knitting of the British Isles, old, old pattern books. There's that one and there's this one, volume one and volume two. And the patterns in here are brilliant and it's such a fantastic read about the Gansey patterns um, and the, the uh, Scotland and the Scottish fleet is that one and Fisher Gansey patterns of North East England so I don't know whether there's a whole um, series of them around the country 
uh, of different Guernsey patterns and um, Aran patterns. But yeah, look at this. So there's your different adaptations on your collar and patterns across the chest. And as you're reading this, you can sort of begin to understand um, why they had these patterns. And you know, a lot of them were obviously double thickness here in the chest because that's where, you know, you want to kind of keep warm and the arms were a little bit thinner, less less uh, patterns on the arms, etc., etc. But it also gives you a little bit of a history about the different fleets and the different patterns. Um, it's really lovely. Uh, some docklands there and ports. Yeah, so that's been a nice, uh, much appreciated and a nice little um, history lesson. I love this guy, <laughs> look at this guy. Here he is, look, and there's nice little potted plants there in his parlour, in his sweater. Fantastic. Do you remember all those knitting patterns? Uh, if you are UK based, I'm sure you must have had them in other parts of the world as well. Um, from like the 70s and 80s and there would be a, a bloke in his, uh, a blokey bloke in his pattern with a pipe maybe. Uh, or um, a beer, you know the old beer glasses with the handle, what are they called, like a beer jug. Um, yeah, having a little pint in his, in his uh, <laughs> hand knitted sweater. Uh, I've got some somewhere, I must dig them out. It's always great when you go into charity shops, you know, and you, they've got a, like a knitting section to flip those patterns. Some of the photo photography, especially in the 70s, is absolutely marvellous. Um, yeah, so that's been a really lovely little read, so I've appreciated that very much. What else have I been up to? Um, trying to do a bit of reading uh, in and out of those moments. It's been really lovely weather here these last few days. Today is a bit more overcast, but trying to get a bit of air and sitting in the back garden doing a bit of reading has been has been really nice. And I also downloaded on the Audible app. I'm obsessed at the moment with Norway. Anything Norwegian, I'm on it. So um, Norse mythology has been a really lovely listen on the on the Audible. Um, so yeah, having that that mythical mystical world. Um, trying to occupy that in this current crazy this world almost seems mystical and mythical doesn't it at the moment but yeah that's how I've been getting by and I'm sure you've had your um, your coping mechanisms and your strategies to get through this too and I have to say aren't we incredibly incredibly lucky that nobody in my family is on the front line um, uh, either working in the NHS or trying to keep our supermarkets stocked or those in essential services. Um, being told to stay inside and then knowing that you have to go out to work, that, that takes guts and I take my hat off to everybody that is doing that every day. Um, the worry of having to even pop to the supermarket really is, is very present in all of us I'm sure, not only for our own health but also for, for passing stuff on. But having to go out and work in those supermarkets, in the NHS, dealing with those patients, dealing with um, the awful, awful situation. Last night, was it last night or the night before, we did our eight o'clock in the evening clap in the streets for the NHS and that was, that was lovely to see everybody out on their doorsteps, appreciating what everybody's doing for us, keeping us all safe. So if you are part of that world, thank you so, so much. Absolutely appreciated. So I feel very lucky and very blessed that um, I am able to be indoors, however stir crazy we go. Um, that is a luxury, really, at the moment. Um, so yeah, knitting-wise, we're sort of done. I'll have a little chat about my week, which was quite chaotic. Um, so if you're leaving me now, thank you so much for dropping by. I will try and go into weekly podcasts now uh, over the next few weeks, uh, as I say, for my sanity, and hopefully we'll, you'll be able to keep me company a little bit. Um, but if you're only here for the knitting, etc., etc., see you later. If you're here for the other stuff, the life stuff, then yeah, how are you doing? It's a bit crazy, huh? Um, wherever you are, I'm sure there's been restrictions put on you. On Monday night, we were told that only essential travel was acceptable. Uh, at that point, my kids were still in university, so my husband and I did a bit of um, a late night mercy dash to go and pick them up 
you know that point where you just need them to be home just need them to be home and safe um so yeah we went to get them didn't get back till about three o'clock in the morning on tuesday morning but happy to have them home um they're both fine we uh we're lucky to have two bathrooms so we've kind of allocated we've split ourselves divided ourselves in two just if any of us go down with it it doesn't spread quite as quickly i'm sure the concern with all of you guys I, i've got asthma um so the concern is that uh, people getting ill being able to look at the people who look after the people who are not ill uh brain people who are not ill being able to look after people who are ill means that we need it to travel not as quick so anything we can do to slow down the traveling through family is uh, is what we're trying to achieve so yeah that's been quite successful so far um we're all okay I have some friends who um, have it and are have quite mild symptoms at the moment, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, it's an ever-present danger, isn't it, for us all? Um, but they're the children being home. I've forgotten how much they eat. My lord, it's incredible. Especially my son. Do you have boys? Do they eat more? Just like a continuous Hoover. Although, I have to say, it's probably because they're so not used to it being away in uni, having a full fridge and full cupboards. Um, yeah, they are hoovering everything up. So we will be doing another shopping trip, I think, on Monday and Tuesday. But again, it makes you see everything in a completely different light. I am incredibly grateful that we are able to have a relatively full fridge and full cupboards. Um, everything is being put into perspective, isn't it, at the moment? Student wise, we've been having um, Zoom seminars and tutorials online and it has been so lovely to see their faces. I really, really miss them and I think they miss each other too. Seeing their little squares pop up on whatever Zoom or whatever Skype or whatever you're using. Yeah. And seeing their little faces pop up on the screen and seeing their joy at seeing each other on the screen has been great because some of them, you know, are living in very busy households, only have a, a shared bedroom. I think we, you know, a lot of families, um, I know my own included, when, when we went to university, well, that was it we were kind of we'd, we'd left home we'd gone so therefore the room was uh repossessed by other areas of the family need so yeah they don't have room at home a lot of them anymore they they are classed as being gone so um yeah there a lot of them are staying on sofas and are having to share rooms with siblings etc so it's a tricky time for them to try and keep up with their studies um, whilst they're in the mayhem of a, of a household. Yeah, you, f you forget how small your house is when it's occupied that everybody, everybody at one time. I'm recording this quite early in the morning because once everybody's up, that's it. There's no quiet or space in the house. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it really. We are keeping well and I hope you are too. Uh, it's been lovely to have some comments, etc. In, in the comments thing below. So please feel free to drop me a line. Um, it's nice to kind of hear from you. Um, there are some virtual online knit nights happening, which are really lovely to jump onto. So I might try and do some of those, or join other people's. Uh, it's kind of nice to see who else is out there and busy. Um, I know I am making lots of use of knitting podcasts, etc. And I'm sure you guys are doing the same. Um, so please keep yourself well. Please, I hope your families are doing well. Uh, again, if you are watching and you are one of those frontline workers, be it supermarkets or NHS or any of those services that keep keep the uh, the country moving forward and taking care of us, thank you so, so much for everything that you do. Um, we'll get through this and uh, hopefully giving people hugs will seem so much the sweeter when we're on the other side. All right then, guys, I'm going to finish up there for now. Have a great few days and I will catch up with you soon. Au revoir. Bye.